to your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, and my husband, Dexter Pelser. Amen. Amen. Today is such a joyful day. We're going to be speaking about family restoration and salvation. But you might ask, well, what is that about, Sister Marisol? You know, when you come to the Lord, it says in Acts 16.31 that you and your house will be safe. And the Lord not only wants to save our souls, but he also wants to restore our families. He wants to restore our relationships. He wants to restore the health of our family, the emotional aspect, every area. Because not only God saves, but he restores. He makes new things new, amen? And I'm just so blessed by that. So before we start, I'm going to ask Brother Dexter to please pray for the program, amen? Amen, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we love you, and we welcome you. And uh, this is a really important topic for me, which is family restoration and salvation. It's fundamental to who I am because what the Lord's demonstrated in both of our families and in families of others that we prayed for. So we pray you're blessed with this today. So let's just go to the Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love our families, and we're of the family of God, and we love you so much, Father God. So today we ask you to reveal to us your plans and your word over our families and how to pray over our families so our families will be restored and saved, all the generations of our families, into the return of Jesus Christ. We want nothing else, Father. So today, open up our eyes yes. to see the truth of your word. Yes. Open up our ears to hear the spiritual truth of the word and our hearts to receive and have the faith to pray together these prayers that we will pray together over our family. In the name of Jesus, lead us, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So... I had a dream, and, and a lot of things, Marisol and I have a lot of dreams, and many of them are prophetic, and, and as watchmen, we have dreams of warning, and other times we have dreams of things, a lot of times he wants to release through our teachings, and so this in particular is a dream that I had that um, brought me a lot of joy of what God is showing me is going to happen in families. And what his word then confirms is to happen in our families, so we want to unite that together faith for the future of what will be in our families because many times brothers and sisters we get so discouraged from what we see in the world and dissension in our families families that break up all those things that are horrible happen prodigal sons that run away from the lord all those things that cause our heart so much sadness and I, I think the Lord wants to show through this dream what is in the future of our families of course with his word and his promises so let me just tell you the dream um, I was taken into a church, and on the back pew was a, a, an elderly man sitting alone praying. And I could tell from his, he was very earnest in his prayer, but there was a sadness over him. It's just something I felt. He was, there was a sadness over him. But he was praying by himself, and there was no one else around him in the church pew. Well, suddenly, the doors of the church opened, and one by one, family members started joining him. And I don't know why this mattered, but there were 40 in all. And I'm talking about all the generations of his family came and joined him in the church. And I am telling you, it was like a family reunion in heaven. There was such joy in his face. It went from sadness to absolute joy that all his family members joined him in the church. And then, as if that wasn't enough, well, then they're all leaving together in their cars, and I just love this part. All of a sudden, out of the sky come like great big garbage bags full of water, like great big balloons full of water that fall on their cars as they're all going together in the caravan and burst open all over their cars. And I just remember, they got out of their cars and I looked up in the sky with just such wonderment that these big balls of water were falling and splashing all over them and on their cars. And, and I'm telling you, there are feelings and dreams, and, and I like to pay attention to them, of such joy in that family. And so 
I, I, Marisol and I got up and we shared the dream, and like we always do, the Word of God says in Daniel that all dream interpretations belong to God. So we went and prayed and asked the Father in the name of Jesus for the interpretation. And boy, it just he, he just started unraveling it. And, and the essence of this is that, you know, we pray on behalf of our families. And in the world, we see it at times like nothing's happening. But in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of God, what he sees is all those family members one in Christ because they all went into the church. And remember, these, and I could just tell, these were many people that were not in the church before. And they were all in the church together, which represents salvation over the family. And then, as they all went out together in the caravans, the water falling on them out of heaven it represents the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Where living waters, as Jesus said, if you come to me, living waters will flow out of your belly. And there was such joy. And so I want to just share what the Lord is showing me about, and, and, and in the end we're going to pray for not only salvation of our families, but also restoration over our families. Because many families have been broken apart for many different reasons. But I want first to go to the Word as to what the Word says about God's calling of our families and what it means to be restored and what it means for salvation for our families in the Word of God, and then we'll pray at the end. So, first I want to acknowledge how this man felt in the beginning scripturally, Proverbs 13, 12. A very important scripture. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. You know, God acknowledges that it is tough at times to pray and pray and pray for something, someone to be healed, for a family member to be saved, for restoration of family when they're broken apart. It is tough when all you seem to see in the world is, is division and bad things happening. But what God wants to see is in the spirit of the kingdom of heaven, what is coming which is not only all the family members being saved in accordance with the promises, and we'll get to those in a second, but also restoration of family members that are split apart by the devil. But let's keep going in the scripture. So first I want to just acknowledge that. Hope deferred does make your heart sick. But what God was showing me is, remember, at the beginning of this prayer, this man was still praying alone on that pew. I don't know whether he was doing this for years. I do not know. But the point being, he was still persistent in his prayers. And then, like Joseph in a day, got out of prison and was raised up as the second most powerful man on the earth, God can move very quickly, member by member, as they get restored. Amen. So, let's go to Acts 16.31. You know the scripture, because the Lord has demonstrated this so powerfully in Marisol and mine's life and our family's life, that it, it's just one of my favorite scriptures. And by the way, this is not only in Acts 16.31, it's also repeated in other places in the scripture which says the same thing. And this is remarkable because this is a jailer. <laughs> when the disciples are in jail and God miraculously releases an earthquake and all the prison cells are open and all the prisoners are set free, the jailer is about to kill himself and commit suicide because all his prisoners he thinks is going to escape. And listen to what the disciples say to the jailer. <laughs> he says, First he says in verse 30, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> and boy, did they have an answer for him. So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, and your household. And in Greek, that's very clear. This is inclusive. You will be saved, and your household. And I'm telling you, it, there's never been a situation so far where Marisol I have not prayed this over our own families, and it has miraculously been demonstrated, and over other families where they have not all come to Christ. And so this is a fundamental, remember, the Word of God says all the promises, which is the Word of God, are yes in Christ. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, we have faith over our families. First of all, they all will be saved, and we're going to pray this prayer. So this is fundamental. First of all, that this man was in that church pew praying, sad, but all 40, all the generations of the family came together into the church with him. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Next, Deuteronomy 7, 9. <clears throat> I think sometimes we forget the Old Testament, 
but there are, but I'm telling you, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the word says. And a lot of the things that he teaches us and promises that he gives us in the Old Testament do apply to us today. I read the Old Testament as much, in fact, I would say probably more, significantly more than even I read the New Testament. Um, but we're both Jewish, so this is kind of comes naturally to me, but there are so many riches of treasures in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Listen to this with your spirit, how God looks at your family. I want you to understand that, and this dream will make a lot more sense. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God. The faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. One of the greatest lessons I've learned in life is that God is a covenant God. And when you make a covenant over your family, as Joshua did, when he prayed, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord forever. When he made that declaration over his family and then continued to pray over his family and continue to obey the Lord, you have to understand that that covenant is now established before God. And it is another lesson I have learned to discern what is going on in life almost all the time. You must understand that God is a God that gives life and life abundantly and has covenants and callings over families. This is very clear in the scriptures. You look at Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the sons of Israel. You look at all these and it is clear that God's plan is not only for you and your husband, but for your children and your children's children. And he has plans until the return of Jesus Christ over your family. So God is a covenant God who is faithful and has plans for your family all the way to the return of Jesus Christ. Not only for their salvation, but for them to fulfill their calling. Now, the devil is a liar and a deceiver and a divider. One of the names of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of unity. So anything that brings families together... Right? Remember, they are all brought together in the church. And I could tell even in how they were brought together that there were divisions that were being restored. The family was being brought together in unity as one unit. The devil is a divider. Anytime I see division in the body of Christ and I see families being split apart in division, I always know it's the work of the devil. That is what the devil does. He is a divider. He is a destroyer. He is a deceiver. The spirits of dissension, envy, jealousy, bitterness, all unforgiveness are all demonic spirits. They're all defined as that in the word of God. Even the spirit of fear, all those are demonic spirits. They divide. That is what the devil does. And you know, the devil is a roaring lion crawling around to see who he can devour. And if he can separate one of the members of your family, he's our easier prey. He likes to divide and to conquer. Because when you are with your family, it's different. You're under protection. You're together. And he likes to separate to kill Dexter. He does, Marisol. And I, and I can tell you, we can both give you personal testimonies. We don't have time in the show, but of the devil trying to divide and destroy our own families. And I am telling you, both times there were major events that occurred to try to divide the families. And I am telling you, both times the Spirit came and instructed Marisol and I, and we made a choice. We said, devil, you are a liar. You will not divide our family, even yes. though we were deeply hurt in what happened to us. We chose to forgive, and then we quickly prayed, and we said, Lord, we choose to forgive, and we choose our family to be united and one in Christ, and we will not let the devil divide and destroy us from our loved ones and our family. He will not allow it. It does not matter, matter if it's brothers and sisters, siblings. It does not matter if it's children. It does not matter if it's parents. We actually consciously made a decision both times, and I am telling you, God did this. Now, sometimes this takes time. I could be willing to bet that man on the church pew may have been there for 10 years praying faithfully. I do not know. All I'm saying is hope deferred makes the heart sick, but there's also the fact that if you keep praying in faith, God will bring 
forth restoration and salvation for the family. Because these are the promises of God in the word. And you must believe all the promises are yes in Christ. I want to turn to Zechariah um, 9.11. I want to talk about restoration. <clears throat> Amen. It says, but as for you, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. One of my favorite stories is of the prodigal son who falls away from his family in riotous living, but when he gets restored, boy, does he get restored. The robe is put on back on him, the ring is put on back on him, and we see the true intention of God from the very beginning was from him, for him, the prodigal son, to be back with his family. In fact, we know that because the father would sit out at the gate, the word would tell us, and look for his son. And when the son came back, he fell on him with kisses and loved him. We know God is a restorer. Joseph is another great example. Joseph was actually separated by his brothers in hate and envy and jealousy because he was a favorite son. We know the story. They wanted to kill him. They threw him in a pit. They sold him into slavery. He was thrown into prison, falsely accused <laughs> for, for sexual relations with his what, Potiphar's wife, falsely accused. He was an honorable man. He was thrown in prison. And finally, he was raised out of prison to interpret a dream of Pharaoh. And in that interpretation of seven years of famine and seven, followed by seven, seven years of good harvest by seven years of famine, he actually was raised up to be the second most powerful man. But one of my favorite parts of that story is the fact that Joseph's father, Jacob was reunited with him, and Joseph was reunited with all his brothers, and they reconciled. The word says they fell together and they wept, and they were reconciled back together and restored as a family. God is a restorer. The devil is a divider. I have never seen anything but that consistently. God wants your family together in love, all the things of division are sins, which are the works of the devil to divide and destroy the family. And you know, love covers a multitude of sins. I think that even myself, all of us need to be more like God. We need to overlook all the imperfections of our families. Amen. Hallelujah. And just pray for them. And, 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 and stand in the gap for them and pray. I'm not perfect. I'm sure Brother Dexter prays a lot for me. <laughs> and I pray for him. But we're called to love each other just the way that Jesus loves us. And, and, and you know, when you really love somebody, you love them. You cover them in prayer. You cover them in prayer. And Marisol, can I go into that? Because yes. I do want to start to release this prayer. And I'm going to do it in a few segments so that we pray over our family. But first, I want to just start with a simple declaration to the Father, yes. which Joshua did, which is so important. Father, as for me and my house, we will serve the yes. Lord forever. We make this covenant over our family yes. line, Lord, that we are yours. Yes. And we will walk with you, and we will be yes. sons and daughters of Jesus Christ and the Most High God, Abba Father. And we choose this over our families and we declare it over our families in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, 1 John 5, 14 through 16. I want to now repent over it because part of the covering over our family is as they sin, the Word of God says you can even repent for other members of the family, even prodigal sons or daughters, or even those that do not know the Lord, yet you can even repent for their sins. Let's read what the Word says. In 1 John 5, 16, if anyone sees his brother, I think it's ironic where it says brother, because I'm actually talking about in the natural also brothers and sisters. If anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, which is total permanent rejection of Jesus Christ or blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, those are the sins that lead to death. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, which is almost all the sins, he will ask, and God will give him life. 
the one you're praying over. For those who commit sin not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. So I want to release this prayer over family members that are not saved yet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent of their sins, yes. of our family members, all the generations yes. of them that have sinned sins that have not led to yes. death, Father. I'm talking about the, all the breaking of the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about idolatry. I'm talking about f serving false gods in Islam or any other religion. I'm talking about all those sins, Father. Yes. We repent to them over our family line and we break covenant with them in the name of Jesus Christ over our family line. And the Lord rebuke you, Satan. We choose Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of our family. And the Lord rebuke you. We resist you, devil. Therefore, you must flee from our family. Now, I want to now, now that we've repented of our families, I want to pray for salvation over them yes. in Acts 16.31. This is one of the most important prayers that we carry an anointing for because it's been true in our lives and God is faithful to this prayer. Continually we see this, which is, Father, as I have believed, I now choose to be a representative yes. over my family line. Yes. And therefore, as I have believed, I believe your word of Acts 16, 31, that my whole household will be saved. And Father, I extend that yes. to my household, even in my youth. That means my parents, my aunts and uncles that I would spend time with, my, ch my siblings, my brothers yes. and sisters, my children, my great-grandchildren, all the generations that return to, to, before the return of Jesus Christ. I prayed this promise over them, Father. Yes. And now I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to perform the word over them. Whatever you must do, Holy Spirit, release the spirit of repentance. Whatever you must do in their lives to bring them to Jesus Christ, I choose unity in my family, and I choose restoration of my family, one in Christ in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And now I ask you to release in the heavenly realm and on earth everything that is necessary for those salvations in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I am telling you, there are things activated in the heavenlies, I feel it right now, where angels are being dispersed to bring forth that salvation in family members. This is what the kingdom of God is about. This is why it says the angels perform the word as it is spoken, and they prepare everything that is necessary to bring them all to salvation, even those that are lost. Now, Zechariah uh, 9. I want to pray this now for restoration. This is really a big deal. There are many families that are broken apart, and there are many that have come to Christ and have been rejected even from your own family. This is a really big deal. In the Jewish community, this is huge because you get rejected when you accept the Messiah. In Islam, you get rejected also, and you get dispersed from your family. So I want to read this. Zechariah 9, 11, and 12. We have two, three minutes. As for you, because of the blood of your covenant... I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Yes. Amen. I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold. Hmm. Amen. You prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we release this word. We release this word, Lord, over our families. Right now, we choose one Psalm 133, unity over our families. We choose to be one in Christ. We choose to be in unity of faith in Christ. And any family member right now, Father, that we are upset about or that hurt us right now in the name of Jesus, we choose to forgive them and love them. And you say that love covers a multitude of sins. So now, Lord, we ask you to release whatever is necessary in the kingdom to restore our families back together. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Mm -hmm. We resist you. You will not separate our families. And Father, we're asking you now to supernaturally bring our families back together in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, now we thank you for that dream and we ask for the fulfillment of that with joy in our members. And the hope that is deferred, we ask to be now a tree of life of joy in each one that has prayed these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So remember, pray for your family to be saved and restored. Amen. And I want you to go to YouTube and look us up. Go to YouTube and look us under shalomshalom.org and subscribe to our channel. Amen. God bless you. This has been your program, Shalom Shalom, with your hosts, your servants, Brother Dexter and myself. See you next week at the same time. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Amen. Blessings. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah.